I have very conflictive feelings about trying to go for a run this morning. I'm not sure how, but so much of me doesn't want to do it, but so much of me does want to do it. I think it's because I haven't been for a run in such a long time. I just trekked Strava and the last run I went on was the 16th of January. And the only reason I went on that run was to uh, try and tire myself out because that was the day we flew to Australia and I wanted to get to the airport feeling pretty tired and be able to get some sleep on the flight. Um, so I wasn't even running regularly when I did that. I just, yeah, that was the sole reason I did that. So really I haven't been in a sort of regular running pattern since maybe October, maybe even earlier than that. I think for maybe almost a year I've been out of the sort of real cycle of it. And I miss it so much, but every time I've sort of thought about doing it, I've been like, no. And I've talked myself out of it. And it's such a cliche to say this, but it's a cliche for a reason. And that is, um, the first one's always the hardest. And the hardest part of it is getting yourself out there. That's the hardest part. And now that the days are longer, the weather's really nice at the moment. Um, I also have some new running clothes, which always helps. I'm going to get a new, make a new playlist in a moment. I just think all the all the odds are in my favour, so I need to stop putting it off and just get out there. Um, I'm going to wear a cap because it's really sunny, but I never know whether to have the plait through the through the hole or not. Maybe I'll just have it like that. That would be comfortable. That'd be fine. Um, yeah, I've got some new running stuff from Adenola. There is just stuff everywhere in this house at the moment. That there is a nice board of um, floor oil samples that we've been testing out. I think I, like, I'm not great at holding myself accountable for things like getting back into running. Like if it's just me holding myself accountable, I'm very good at talking myself out of things as you can probably um, gather from the way I'm kind of procrastinating right now. Um, so I've said to Dean this week, like, I really want to get back into running. The weather's really nice. Like, I just want to feel kind of good in myself again. And running really helps with that. Um, so can you just kind of give me a nudge each day and remind me that I will feel better on the other side of it. And then I think vlogging the, um, the process also kind of helps with the continued motivation. I'm running in the Hocker Bondi 7s at the moment. I've had these for almost a year and I... I'm quite eager to get some new trainers because I, the whole time I've been wearing these, although I, they're, I'd say they're like 80% comfortable, they're just, I think I needed a half size bigger because they're just, they pinch a little bit too much around the top of my foot. Um, and for that reason, I don't find them like 100% comfortable. And I know people rave about them, but I've just not really kind of understood the hype. And I think it's just because I've got the wrong size. I would quite like to try uh, on next. I like the look of those funky cylindrical soles. This is the, the glamorous angle I'm putting my shoes on. Um, failing that, I don't know what, I could just go back to the Asics gel, the gel Nimbus. I can't remember if there's a number at the end there, but I wore those for about two years straight and they're probably the most comfortable running shoes I've ever had and it probably makes sense just to go back to those rather than trying new trainers but you you hear people like rave about and you, like you see loads of people in like I saw loads of people in these um and I was like oh but um they look a bit like a sort of Spice Girls platform don't they a little baby Spice platform trainer right I'm gonna go and attempt do you know what? I'm not even gonna give myself a distance I'm just giving myself a time of 20 minutes um, I'll run for 10 minutes in one direction and then I'll just run back and not worry about the distance, just have a nice run listening to some music in the sun. bolted out of the house a little bit too quickly and by the second kilometre I was struggling to control my breathing even now I am even though I've slowed down a little bit so um yeah definitely thought I could run faster comfortably faster than I actually thought I could um but that's fine 
just learning, just need to learn to take it nice and gentle while I get back into it. I feel quite sad when I think about not having another summer here in our garden. Those of you who have watched since, um, I guess since the, those lockdown videos when we really put a lot of time and effort into getting our garden like established and feeling like a really good garden. So it's something that we're both really proud of and we've loved nurturing over the summers. But yeah, I don't think we'll be here this summer. It's highly likely that we will be living in the new house by then. So it feels quite sad to think that we won't really see this all come into like full bloom. Although it <laughs> had a really bad winter, like a lot of stuff I'm I don't well not a lot of stuff, there's just a few things I don't think are gonna come back this summer. Like this corner was thriving for like two years, and then I don't know what happened over winter. I guess the plant just got sick, something killed it off because it is like it's fully gone. There's some little shoots at the bottom there, so I'm hopeful that it could possibly come back, but I think the whole thing just needs like cutting away and then hopefully something will come, something will grow. But yeah, it's such a shame because it was such a beautiful, like it was just so luscious and like bright green. It was just gorgeous and filled that space perfectly. And now, it's, now look at it. Um, these grasses as well just look terrible. I don't really know what's going on with this plant either. It doesn't really get enough sunlight, so it never feels like it comes into like a full bloom. There's definitely things happening. Uh, the eucalyptus as well, like another one that for years just did so well, and then this winter just killed it off. Um, and again, I don't really know if it's going to come back. It's just completely dried out and it's gone brown but for so long it was thriving. Um, on the plus side though, this little bit here, last summer I kind of chucked a load of just like wildflower seed balls and things are happening. I don't know if it's, I mean, I think there's gonna be a combination of like, just sort of like general weeds, I guess, but this, like, I'm so excited to see what this is. And I think this is one of the fruits of my labor from last summer. Um, I think something, it's like it's hard to tell what is just like a sort of general garden weed and what is like a wildflower that I put down but we shall see um this always flowers into something beautiful it's like it normally climbs up these sticks and then has bright yellow flowers I need to get rid of do you know what? I think I'm going to leave most of the garden to just do what it's going to do I'm just going to pull out that stinging nettle because they they really spread quite quickly and they get quite big along with this here. I never know the name of this, I've always called it sticky weed, but that just spreads like wildfire. So I just want to get rid of those. But for the most part I think I'm just gonna leave it, let it do its thing, and then whoever whoever moves into the house will be able to do what they want with it. But yeah, I'm just having a bit of a melancholy morning, watering it all, just thinking how much I'm gonna miss miss it. But like I said, we have a new space, we have a new garden that we can plan and, you know, get that looking great. Finding the um, ebbs and flows of renovation life and balancing that alongside work, like two different types of work, um, a bit difficult. All of a sudden, my brain is very, very crowded, and we're also trying to maintain like a level of like creative flow and like staying creative and having like inspiration to continue like creating like interesting content for Instagram. Although I'm virtually just not, I'm not present on there at all at the moment. Like things I post are just so just meh, you know. Um, and it's the same with vlogs, I feel like I wasn't happy with last week's vlog and although it's probably not even something that you as a viewer can notice, I just wasn't happy with how I put it together, like the, the actual content of it, it just felt a bit too slapdash to kind of just get it out. Um, and I fear that this one will as well because my, my, my brain just can't really, like at the moment I just 
feel uninspired on this side of work because my brain is so overstimulated with like renovation stuff at the moment and I think we just every, it's like every free moment we have we're like right let's go to the house what we can do at the house because Dean's in between jobs at the moment so before he starts his next job we're just trying to like utilize his time as much as possible because once he goes once he starts his next job the progress on the house is going to slow down massively because I can't there's only a limit to the things that I can do especially on my own I'm very much like painting um, you know like I can oil things I can I can like do the finishings on things but I can't actually really like build stuff on my own I can help Dean build stuff but I certainly couldn't like do anything like that by myself um, so at the moment it's just like right all of our time that is that we can spend on that house is being spent on that house and we fully anticipated that that's kind of what you you get with renovation especially if you're not project man if, if you don't have a project manager which we don't we are we're project managing ourselves which is quite a big task and also like the financial the it's it's a terrifying terrifying financially that is what i will say about renovation if you like because we're not doing this with like a, a budget in mind, we're doing this kind of on a cash flow basis. So this won't be something that in like eight months time is finished and there's going to be a grand reveal. If anything, in eight months time, we're just going to be living still on a building site, just waiting until we can afford the next thing. It's just, it's going to be in real stages based on cash flow, which is quite a scary thing. Um, but we just don't, when, when we don't have the ability to, to have like one big set budget and get it all done and you know by the end of the year have this incredible house to reveal um which I'm, I'm fine with but it's just like it can feel quite scary and overwhelming and you kind of wonder if you've made the right decision and whether you'll kind of get to the other end the other side of it but I think back to when we did this house um and it, this is how this house is smaller and we we still did quite a lot of work to it and it took us about a year until we could move into this house and when we moved in it still wasn't like at a, in a place where we wanted it to be we continued to work on it so much when we moved in um but it's just the joys of renovation life isn't it that this is what you sign up for um and we just press on because i know that with these ebbs and flows, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll probably be feeling like way in a way better headspace about it, and like my creative juices will come back, and I'll be like feeling good about vlogs and feeling good about Instagram content again. But at the moment, I just feel so flat. I keep telling myself, and this is such a phrase that gets you used so often in renovation: it'll all be worth it in the end. And I can't have my, I can't be present in every aspect of my life when such a big project is going on and I hope that that is something that you guys understand when the vlogs aren't that great um, and also in terms of like Instagram content I feel like I'm just putting like sprinkles of things over on there and it's not really that good it's not really that interesting um, but in the end I know it will all work out I just can't see the, the light at the end of the tunnel at the moment i'm just sort of deep in it anyway shout out to adenola though for making such an excellent fitting jogger what do you call this tracksuit no just jogging jog jogger set when i'm just around the house i've always got a big jumper on like a sweatshirt or like just you know just a big cozy jumper on i find it quite difficult to find jogging bottoms that are a good length for me they're either too cropped or they're far too long i, I really struggle to find that in between but add an over i've really hit hit it on the head with the length of these because they've still got a nice sort of like looseness to them and they still pull a little bit at the bottom there but it, it like it looks in proportion you know what i mean it actually looks like a it's like a good fitting bottom it's quite nice to have a coordinating, um, coordinating lounge outfit. It feels like just like a real like step up from what I'm normally in. <laughs> I'm just sat here about to try and alter a dress. 
on the sewing machine. Um, we're going to a wedding in like three hours and the dress I want to wear is just a little bit too kind of straight up and down on the waist. If this works, I'll show you the dress. <laughs> I mean, it has to work because I don't really have any other option. Um, but yeah, I just want the dress that I'm wearing to be a little bit slightly more curved in at the waist just to give me a bit more shape. Um, I have not used a sewing machine in such a long time. I do have like basic sewing machine knowledge because when I was really young, my mum made a lot of clothes for me and my sister. And then as I sort of got, came into my teenage years, like before I had a job to buy myself clothes, I would kind of alter and customize a lot of my own clothes. Um, so I can do basic things, but it's been a while and a little bit rusty. Hopefully this will work. Um, the wedding we're going to is quite a casual wedding. Um, usually I, w I wear that you know, big black Cecily Barnson dress I've got. I wore it, I think it was last year or the year before to a wedding. Big, like poofy one. That's normally a go-to for weddings, but I actually think that's a bit too fancy for this wedding. And I quite fancy wearing something that isn't black. So I'm going for this lemon, it's probably not gonna, sort of like a lemony, very pale, sort of like buttery yellow color actually. Less, less lemon, more butter. I'm gonna wear this with a pair of white loafers. I'll show you the full look once I've, fingers crossed, made this adjustment. Okay, a quick alterations check before I get myself properly ready. I realize I didn't film how the dress looked beforehand, but it was just a little bit too straight here. So I've just nipped it in at the sides. This is just a temporary measure until I have time to actually take this to a tailor. I didn't have time pre-wedding. Um, I've done an okay job. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Um, when I have my arms down, it's fine. You can't notice the little bit of ruching here at the sides. Um, like if I'm holding a drink or whatever. Eh, no one will really notice that. To be honest, the bit I was worried about the most was keeping it smooth along the hips. And I think I've done an all right job considering... I literally just did like a sort of straight line all along the waistline and then sort of like went like blended back into the pocket and I've managed to do it so I can still use the pocket. Um, and then shoes are my white row loafers and I will have my white porto pouch. And then for earrings, I am going to add something a bit bolder. I tried like some gold like statement earrings, but the gold with this colour just didn't quite go right. It was all a bit too warm toned. So I think silver is the way forward silver or maybe something like white I don't, actually i don't know if that's maybe like white shoes white bag white, white earrings that might be a bit too much um maybe something pearly i think those mold atelier ones that are sort of like a leaf like a silver leaf that almost is similar to the shape of these sleeves actually similar sort of like curves and then there's a sort of big pearl hanging off the bottom i think they might be a good option and then just whistles leather jacket over the top or a trench a puff sleeve is always quite difficult um feeling much better now that dean's sort of just tidied up the ends of my hair i mean i just it looked so straggly and i was i just thought i need the dead ends cut off so he just went in a straight line along with the clippers and then a, i will actually get a proper haircut at some point but i'm just letting it dry naturally at the moment and then i'll sort of Add in a little bit more wave at the back here. Um, yeah, right, I'm gonna go get ready. Yeah. Hello. Hopefully I'm in full frame. Starting a very cloudy Sunday, both physically and mentally, after what was quite a fun wedding with a run. I'm not hungover, I just had maybe like one too many sips of wine, which has made me just feel a little bit oof. So starting the day with a run to just kind of like make myself feel all fresh again. Um, we stayed at Dean's parents last night because it was a family wedding on their side. And Dean's parents live in a, in a village that's quite small and remote. And 
just surrounded by small tracks and fields so it means I'm going running in a completely new location which is always good for running motivation trying somewhere new. These Adenola leggings are so soft so I wore the black pair the other day I've also got a chocolate brown pair and these are sort of like a faded navy um, yeah they're really soft I was quite worried I'd got a size too small because they're, they are quite a struggle to get on once they're on they're pretty stretchy they're pretty comfortable and I like that they aren't shiny do you know what I mean sometimes with activewear it has that sort of like sheen and um, I like that these don't have that they just have a very nice soft handle to them um, Adenola t-shirt as well and um, my running trainers um, I don't think I really can articulate anything else right now my brain just can't quite function um, so I'm hoping just just maybe like 15 20 minutes of running will just help like clear my mind a little bit and um, get me up for the day all right let my lesson from the run the other day and controlled my breathing a lot more that time round. slowed myself down didn't just like leave immediately sprinting just took it slow lots of stopping and starting because i was just looking at flowers and fields and things um but sometimes they're the nicest ones where you just sort of like stop a bit take your surroundings it's like perfect running conditions today it's cloudy there's a little bit of a cool breeze but the sun keeps trying to break through the clouds so you kind of get these little pockets of light sort of spread all over the fields it's very nice i'm really romanticizing my countryside run aren't i um and now just walking like the last sort of half a kilometer um yeah that was good i'm really glad i did that Hello from Paris again, back again for a few days. I'm here with COS this week because they are showing, they're doing a presentation of their new atelier collection, which I will be able to share with you in a few hours when I go to the presentation. So I'm here with them for a couple of days, which is quite nice. Um, you all know that I'm a big COS fan, have been for years and have worked with them for years and years. So it's nice to just continue that. Um, just trying to depuff this morning with my new face, sort of lift my face a bit because it was a late night last night. We went out for dinner. I didn't get any footage of it um, because I was just so excited to see people and chat. Um, so it's absolutely useless me telling you that we went for dinner, but I'm going to make sure to film where we go for dinner tonight. So I'll make sure to do that. Um, I'm trying to be really consistent with the new face. I've had the, the device for so long and it's one of those things I dip in and out of, but um, I'm really trying to be consistent with it. I do it every morning um, until it bleeps off. I try and do it until it bleeps off, but you don't have to. You just, you can do it however much you feel like you need to do it uh, before it turns off. I don't think you should exceed it and do it again. Um, but I am finding that the overall sort of like, oh, there we go, done. I do feel like my, my face feels like firmer. I've been doing it probably for about two weeks consistently. It feels firmer, it feels a little bit lifted. I do feel like overall like my skin's sort of like texture is better. I don't know if that's due to new face or maybe my skincare, but yeah, I, I feel quite like happy with how my face looks in the morning. Um, and I do think it's partly due to new face. I'm also trying to do sort of like more like neck massage and stretches in the morning because I was, I saw something on the internet about how the muscle here, when it's tight, it really kind of like pulls and that can make your face like pull, pull down if you know what I mean um which explains why I've had when I've had massages it explains why they sort of gua sha here so I've been trying to gua sha down my neck and just do like you know like some morning stretches and I do think it's helping with the old just with like the bottom section of my face basically um just wash my hair I'm gonna let that air dry naturally because I quite want like quite a, a messy wavy do today
this time. <gasps> it's just swirls. <laughs> look at me. Another day of trying to make myself look not so tired. Yesterday was lovely. The presentation, well, I wouldn't really say it was a presentation, it was more of like a full on show actually. <clears throat> was really, really nice. And by the time this vlog is live, all of that collection will be um, live on the COS website. It's going to be in the Paris store exclusively today. And then I think it launches on Friday, the 28th globally. Um, it's a very COS collection. Um, they do, they know what they do well and they've done it well and that's what I really appreciate because today um, I'm going out with a photographer this morning just for half an hour to shoot some pictures in one of the show looks there was a like a excuse me a three-piece linen suit that I'm going to take some pictures of me wearing and then I think I'm going to try go to the Paris store to see the collection up close and personal because um, it would be really nice to try some bits on and just have a bit of a feel. Um, that was one of the Shiseido, I think is it the Express Eye Mask? The packaging's in the bin now. I think it's like the Shiseido Express Eye Mask. I only ever buy them at airports because they're very expensive. Um, so obviously you get, they're a bit cheaper. They're very good in emergency situations such as this. Another thing that really helps in the morning is, I'll, I'll do my new face which will help, this oh, this face mask from Sicily, it's called the Black Rose Cream Mask, another one that I only really buy, like I bought this at the air, at Singapore airport because the, both the exchange rate and getting the tax off made it so much cheaper. Um, but yeah, I, this is one of those products like I wouldn't, I, try, I like use sparingly, as in like I don't use it often. It's really good, but because of its price point, I'm trying to make it last as long as possible. Um, so I only really use it if I'm like, feel like I really don't look that fresh. Um, and it's quite a quick one as well, you don't have to leave it on long. Right, I feel like, I'm um, not too dark, but 40 minutes, that's fine. to try some stuff on. I'm in the power store trying on the dress. This was my favourite piece from the show. It is stunning, absolutely stunning. It's such a just beautiful shape, beautiful colour. I think this is going to be a really good one for weddings. I'm wearing a 36. I'm also going to try the 34 because I'm interested to see how that changes the fit of this bit. There's I wonder if I can show you this. So on the back there, there is an elastic band which keeps all of this up and keeps this kind of like, I guess, it, mean, it means that this doesn't need to be like a functional piece. This is just like a sort of decoration. And then that elastic runs all the way under this. See what I mean? So that's doing the legwork. And then this is just here looking pretty. Um, just thinking how I could style it. I have a wedding next month and I'm just wondering how I would style this. Um, I think potentially maybe the white loafers again could look quite cool. This is me stood normally, this is me slightly elevated so it would need maybe a little bit taken off the bottom but it's beautiful colour. Um, it's a linen viscose blend um, so it has got quite a sort of, it's got quite a rough feel to it. Um, I don't know if you can kind of almost see the texture there. Right, this little duo that can be purchased separately, obviously, not not exclusively have to be worn together, but is a nice option for those of you that just prefer black. <laughs> um, this is 100% silk, this dress, and it has a very, very small scallop detail there. Um, and you can kind of see that seam there and then the trousers are sort of like a real loose straight leg trouser with an elasticated drawstring waist and then 
the back is, oh, you can kind of see in the back mirror there actually, it's a lot deeper than the front. Um, and then there's this sort of like train attached, which you can you could just have as a train. I mean, it wouldn't be, I'd probably end up standing on that and tripping. Can be worn, let's see if I can do this. Could be worn as like a, like a thing around your neck, you know, not like that. <laughs> you know, could be done like this. There we go. Or there is, I'm not explaining this very well, but there is like a little loop. Ah, oh, you can see there, that loop there, you can feed this through that loop and it can kind of sit like that and it just is like part of a nice little detail on the shoulder. I think I'd wear it like that. Um, so that's nice. This will be nice with like, just like an open toe sandal, I reckon. Um, nice holiday look. Yeah, quite like this. I forgot to look at the fabrication of this before I put it on, so I'll put it on the screen here. Um, this is a really nice shirt. Like, it's not fitted, but it's not oversized. It's like just a very true shirt, which I really appreciate because I think it's so hard to find that kind of like middle ground with shirts. Um, yeah, this is great. The only thing I would have maybe preferred is an unconcealed like placket, but it does create a really nice clean look. And if I had a belt, which I don't have with me right now, but you know, like a nice gold belt, um, this would be great, you know? Um, there is some pleating on the sleeve, which I appreciate. Um, but yeah, do one thing and do it well. And Cos have really done that with this shirt. I think it is very nice. But the, um, sorry, annoyingly, because I don't know the fabrication, I feel like I can't talk about it. Maybe I'll just pull this out. It doesn't feel like stiff. It is. Oh, it's 82% cotton, 18% silk. That's why it has a really nice feel to it. I like this a lot. Um, so they are probably my top three that I saw in store today. There's lots of other lovely bits, but they, they were the three things, well, four if you count the dress and the trousers, two separate things. Um, they were the things that kind of like really stood out to me and I knew I wanted to try on when I got here. Um, this would look really cool actually. This is also cos, but I, this is something I actually own. Um, you know, doing my little thing. This is, I'm really not illustrating this very well. I oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I can barely handle one late night in a row. So two late nights in a row has almost wiped me out. I got home last night and I was so tired I could have gone to bed at like 8 p.m. But it's Friday and I can I can recoup today. I've got lots of just computer work to do today so I feel like I can just sit and just get on with that and um, I'll be fine. Just looking outside, about to get changed for my run and it's misty. What, why is it misty? It's May on Monday and it's misty. Uh, guys, SOS. <laughs> Um, looking marginally better, however, I had to just stop doing my makeup because I've noticed a rash around the bottom of my eye, you probably won't be able to see this on camera, and I've noticed that the inner corners of my eyes are swollen, and it's giving me the fear that I'm about to have a repeat of last summer. Do you remember that eye situation I had that just, I didn't really ever get the, to the bottom of it, I had to have, take some steroids and use a steroid cream and that cleared it up, and then it just kind of faded away, um, but I really don't want a repeat of that. So I'm just I'm just down tools, stop doing my makeup and just hope that this is my body's reaction to just being a bit tired because my throat's a bit croaky as well. So I'm just hoping it's something that will just fade away by the end of the day. Right, um, just, I'm, I'm still gonna go for a run. I think that'll make me feel much better this morning. This Adenola top, um, I've still got the tag on because I think it's a little bit too small and I'd like to try a small instead. So I'm gonna send the top back but I wanted to show it nevertheless because I do think it's a really good running top and the, a few of the, the few tops that I've been sent, although they've been a bit too small, I have been impressed with the quality, the thickness and the general support. They've all been padded tops, which I much prefer a padded uh, because sometimes when I'm running things can get a bit nipply, you know, depending on the weather and I get a bit self-conscious about that so the padding eliminates that embarrassment and that self-consciousness. Um, it's pretty thick padding, I have to say. 
and it doesn't feel like the type of padding that's going to like shift as you're moving around um, and a really beautiful cut I love just this like low scoop this is all quite nice around here very clean you know just clean and straight cropped which I like when leggings are really high waisted um, but yeah it's just it's just kind of like around my rib cage I can just feel it's a little bit restrictive um, but yeah I just wanted to highlight how how nice that top is. Um, I'm also wearing the matching leggings. The leggings are fine. I've got those in an extra small, but um, I think I'm a small in Adenola tops. So I've, I've found that out. I'm just going to show you a hero top that I've really, the, the piece I've loved the most out of all of the pieces I've tried when I'm running. It's not going to look like much until I get it on because it's, it is just a plain black long sleeve top. But what I love about this the most is it's 100% cotton. So it's a natural fibre that's more breathable and it feels so soft. It feels, it's just the nicest feeling top. Um, and the cut, the cut is really perfection. And I don't say that much about sportswear or, you know, like running clothes. Obviously this top can be worn outside of running in many other situations, but just in this video's context, I've been using it for running would happily use it for other activities. The cut, it like, it's perfect. I would say it is the perfect top for when it's still a bit cool outside, but it's not quite cold enough to have a jacket on, but it's not warm enough yet to be running out in a t-shirt or a vest, certainly not a vest at the moment. This is that top. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'll show you in the mirror what it actually looks like, that'll be better. There we go, that's better. See what I mean? So I'm five foot three, most things are a little bit too long on me, both trousers and tops. Um, sleeves are always too long, tops are always too long in the body. This, I, I just think this is spot on. It's not cropped, so it sits nicely on the hip there. Um, so don't really have to worry about that sort of like riding up problem. Another thing, because you know me, I love to overthink about the, the psychology of clothes and the way clothes make you feel and think. I think there's a real, for me personally, when I'm running, there's really something to be said about clothes that make me feel secure and make me feel like I know what I'm doing and make me feel like I'm set up for a run. There's, I've had it in the past where I've not put on the right thing and it's had a negative impact on the run because I've not been comfortable, I've not felt like I really have got the right thing on. Um, so when I do, I notice quite a big difference, like a positive difference in my running when I've got the right thing on. Not only does it make me feel like I know what I'm doing, um, I feel like that when I've been out in my Adenola stuff, it makes me look like I know what I'm doing as well, especially when I've got my cap on, um, once I've got my shoes on as well, I do, I feel like I look like I know what I'm doing. Um, so I, I appreciate that. I've, I've appreciated that about Adenola, about these pieces. They're just simple, um, but they make me feel really good. Radio 6 is on fire today. It's 20 years since the Yeah Yeah Yeahs released Fever to Tell, their first album. So in celebration, they have been playing music that was released in 2003, just 2003, um, which was such a like pivotal year and kind of era for music. It was really the sort of like beginning of the internet internet music, MySpace, kind of like downloadable music, and listening to it has been the most nostalgic, like, journey. So there's been a lot of, um, like, there's a lot of Amy Winehouse, there's a lot of that kind of indie sleaze era. I remember, I mean, I was 13, and I remember as, at that age, I was really sort of trying to develop my own taste in music. My taste in music has been so heavily influenced by my dad and what he listened to. And I remember when I was 13, it was because of the internet, that was when I started discovering music kind of outside of what he listened to. Um, and it, yeah, I just remember so much so vividly from that era, um, especially MySpace. Especially MySpace and MSN and kind of like the real, I guess, the height of indie and that it, that would then follow on to like the beginning of new wave eventually which um yeah lots and lots of fond memories and then listening to this also makes me feel not incredibly old but it makes me realize how much time has passed 
and how it's crazy how that era like feels still so like I remember it so vividly and it doesn't even feel like it was that long ago but actually 20 years is a long long time but for that kind of era of music to still have such a big um a big kind of like significance to me and I imagine it will do to a lot of people who remember that kind of era of music and it's been really interesting listening to people phone in and how so many songs like have triggered like a, a really specific memory or a specific time in their life which has been really nice to listen to um and then Dean's also been listening to it. he's been listening to it while he's at work and he keeps texting me being like are you still listening um and literally just played the rapture like they played Lady Tron earlier and like I loved Lady Tron so so much when I sort of started my teens um and just things like the rapture and the strokes and lcd sound system and there was a real real special movement there 